Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a prototype copy of Delta. It's the newest game coming from Game Brewer. And before we get into this, please comment down below what you like or not like about what you see in this video. Like this video, and more importantly, subscribe to the channel. It's something super easy for you to do, and it really helps us out. All right, now in Delta, players will adventure through the Delta region of Camargo. You are looking to gain more information in uh, of the crystals that power up the perpetual steam engines. You will use the, your crew to take actions on one to three parts of the board to create inventions, to explore the land, and, and gaining knowledge through research. Points are awarded for accomplishing various tasks in the game, and after six rounds, the player with the most points wins the game. So each player starts the game with a player board, some exploration markers, three card markers, and ten base character cards. Players will shuffle up their cards, discard one face up in each zone of their player board, and the remaining seven cards will form their beginning hand. Now, there are four main phases that happen throughout the game. Preparation, where you choose turn order and bonuses. The action phase, where players play out their character cards. The resolution phase, where players acquire new cards. And then the upkeep phase, where you get ready for the next round. In the first round, the preparation phase is already done during setup, but to show you how this works later in the game, the player who is highest on the engineering track, which is this track here, they place their turn order marker on the order track wherever they would like. The top spot doesn't earn any bonus, but the player can choose their turn order and the matching bonus that sits on the side, if not on that top spot. Then the next player, second on the engineering track, will do the same, and, and so on until all players have done so. So players are weighing out their choices to either possibly go earlier in turn order, which can possibly get you something before someone else gets it, or instead you can take a bonus to be used whenever you'd like during that round. I'll explain the bonuses as I go through the actions that they would apply to here later on, but this is the airship tile, this is the initiative tile, this is the engineer and biologist tile, and this is the coin tile. So then, on to phase number two. Here you will be playing out your character cards from your hand, and players in turn order will place one of their character cards in one of the three sections of the board. Cards are placed on the bottom section, and then they will perform that action from the section of that board that they place their card on, as well as any actions that that card that they placed allows. The next player will then do the same, and after all players have placed their first card, all players will again, in turn order, place their second and then third card. Players can only place one card in each section of the board, so after three turns, each player will have one card in each of the three sections. So when placing a card, you will choose one of your character cards from your hand and play it on one of the three sections of the board. You will place one of your card markers on top of it to mark that it's yours. You can then add an initiative tile, engineer or biologist tile, or a coin tile onto your card. You cannot place a bonus tile on an already placed out card. You will then collect the resources shown on the side of the card. Resources are shown on two sides of the card for ease of play, but you will only take the resources listed on one of the sides, not both. Also, some resources are not physical components, but they are still earned, just not physically placed on your player area. Let's go over some of these resources. So first, cogs. For each cog, you will move your engineer marker up once on the engineering track. If you ever move up past a dragonfly marker, you will look at the tiles present, select one to take, and place the remaining back, and then you take the reward shown on that tile. Then the crystals. You will gain one crystal from the supply and add it to your area. Flasks. For each flask, you will take one from the supply and add it to your player area. Coins. Coins represent the resource of the section where the card is played. When placed in the workshop, a coin is one cog. In the map of the delta, a coin is a crystal. And in the research library, a coin is one flask. The airships. Each airship on your character card plus any other bonuses, including that airship bonus tile when picking the second position on the turn order track, are, they're all calculated up and can be used toward the explore action on the map of the delta. When exploring different islands, you will need to have the shown airship value or a higher value to explore that new area. Initiative. Each initiative on your character card or from bonus tiles when choosing the third position on the turn order track or from other bonuses that you have, you will calculate them up in each section and the player with the highest initiative will choose first when acquiring new cards from that section. These cards are the cards that sit on top of each section of the board. 
So now you have chosen a card, you placed it in one of the three sections of the board, and you placed out your card marker on top of it to remember which one is yours, and you have collected any resources or noted that you have them, and then you will perform one or more action in the section where you played that card. You can perform as many different actions pertaining to that section as your character permits. All characters will let you perform the standard action, but certain characters or bonus tiles are required to perform character actions in addition to the standard action. Some actions also can be performed as many times as you wish, while others can only be done once per round. Let's finally go over these actions that pertain to each of the sections of the board. We will start here in the workshop. Here there is no standard action, but you can claim resources and place characters with initiative icons to get a first choice on a new card. But you can also take some character cards if your character is an engineer showing this symbol, or if you place a card and add an engineer biologist bonus tile with it, you can create an invention. You will do this by paying the cost of cogs on the engineer track by moving your marker back that number of spaces according to the cost shown on the invention tile that you want to take. And there are three tiles available at a time and you will place the tile in your player area and this will be used at the end of the game towards in-game scoring or you can use it when you want to take its listed action. If you place a patron card on this section, you will get another turn order bonus tile from the position above or below your turn order marker. Just remember that it is only available to be used for the remainder of this round, so if this is your third card, you might want to pick up one that you can use right then and there. So really your focus here are the invention tiles and using your engineer characters and patrons, and if you can't do any of that, play a card to gain some resources that you might need for the future. Now onto the middle section, the map of the Delta. The standard action in this area is to explore, and you can explore a new island by placing an exploration marker on the board. There are three different regions on the map, the swamp, the desert, and the forest. There is also Boduca and Tarapa that are considered islands outside of the three main regions. And you will place your new exploration marker on an adjacent island that you already have one of your exploration markers on. At the beginning of the game, you will only have one in Boduca, and then adjacent islands are connected by either a bridge or an airship path, and you can only have one exploration marker on each island, and you will need to pay the number of crystals shown on the island to go there. If another player already has one of their markers on the same island that you want to go to, then you must pay one more crystal to go there. You also need to have airships equal to or greater than the amount shown on the path connecting the two islands. And the airships can be used from your played out cards or from your bonus tiles. And you will simply count the number instead of physically playing this resource. Now, as you get further out, some islands require a pilot symbol, which can be found on some character cards, some animal cards, and invention tiles. And if you don't have one to use toward going to that island that it requires, then you can't go there. When you visit an island that has a dragonfly reward tile, then you can look at the tiles and take the one that you want and gain its bonus. You will also then gain the amount of points indicated on that island when you explore it. This is one of the main ways to gain points during the game, but don't worry, there are a lot of ways to gain points for in-game scoring as well. Now, lastly, when exploring in this middle section, when you place a pilot card in that section, you will gain one extra point when you are exploring a new island. Now let's go to the third section of the board. This is the research library. Here there are two standard actions. You can gain knowledge or perform an in-depth study. When gaining knowledge, you can play any character card to then choose and discard one character or mission card from your hand to increase your knowledge of the animal that is depicted on that card. You will move your marker up one space to the right on the relevant track. This action can only be performed once per turn. When doing the in-depth study action, you will play any character in the area and then you will play an animal card, as many as you have or that you want to use. You will pay the cost in flasks on the card and then the card is placed next to your player board and you gain the depicted benefit on the lower half of that card immediately. When using your leader character card when doing the in-depth study action, you gain one flask discount when paying. 
Also, if you play a biologist card or use an engineer biologist bonus tile on another card, you can publish a scientific paper and you will pay the number of flasks required and then take the tile and place it next to your player board until the end of the game. Scientific papers give you goals for final scoring and if you accomplish the goal, then you will gain extra points. These tiles are also not refilled like everything else is, but will be refilled during the upkeep phase after round three. So at this point, you have placed a card in each of the three sections on the board. And so now it's time for the step where you will gain or acquire cards, depending on the cards that you placed out. Now, each section has a connected area of cards that connect to that area of the board. So the workshop has advanced character cards. The map of the Delta section has animal cards and the research library has mission cards. The player who has the most initiative, which can appear on some character cards or on bonus tiles, the person with the most gets to choose first out of all the cards laid out. Ties are determined by the player who placed their card in the leftmost position. And for this reason, those card markers are important so you know which card that you played out on your turn. And being first or higher in turn order can also give you those tiebreakers. All acquired cards from these sections will go into your hand, except the mission cards from rounds one through three. Those are placed face up near your player board for all to see. The upkeep phase is then performed after acquiring all your cards to prepare for the next round. The cards above the board are refilled by placing the number of cards equal to the number of players. Just remember that the mission cards will change in rounds four and five with a different deck. Each player will then choose one of the three discard piles from their player board and take up all the cards present in that spot and place it back into their hand. This will just be one card at the end of the first round, but later on these spots will have more and more cards. Players then take their discarded placed out character cards from each section on the board and place them in the corresponding spots on their player board, matching the left section card with the left section of their player board, the middle section with the middle section on their player board, and the right section with the right section on their player board. So each round you will add one card to each pile. Continuing on with the upkeep, the topmost invention tile is removed from the game and all other tiles move up and the spaces are then refilled. If it's the end of round three and round three only, you will remove any remaining scientific paper tiles and refill with three new ones. Turn markers are returned back to each player and all turn order bonus tiles are returned back to their matching spaces. Remember, they only last for that one round. You will then move the round marker to the right and continue with the next round. After six total rounds, you will then perform the in-game scoring and you will have gained some points during the game from placing your exploration markers on the map of the Delta, but you'll keep adding points from various in-game scoring. You get points from passing the cog intervals on the engineering track. There are four steps on the track to gain more points. And after the first one, you get three points. After the second one, you gain six points. If you make it past the third one, you gain 10 points. And if you pass the fourth one and have 17 cogs, you will gain 15 points. You gain points indicated on each mission card that you gained from rounds one through three if you meet the conditions on those cards. Also from scientific papers for the things that you have acquired or achieved during the game. You gain points for each animal collected. For each type of animal, you will count the number of pictures of the animal that you have and multiply that number by the position that your knowledge marker has reached on the corresponding knowledge track. Lastly, you will gain one point for every three leftover crystals or flasks in combination. The player then with the most points wins the game. And well, that's Delta. It's a hand management game where exploration, gaining additional bonus tiles, and collecting the best cards to use are the main mechanics that they work really well together in this game. Players will be performing actions on each section of the board, but within moving up on the engineer track and exploring more islands on the map and moving up on the research track, you are also planning on how you collect specific cards and to continue to take other actions, but also focusing on fulfilling more and more goals that you get throughout the game. For example, you will gain tiles where you will need to explore certain areas on the map. And if you do so, you can score additional points but if you don't get these tiles, then exploring it is probably less important. And maybe you go after the animals and more heavily focus on that instead. 
A collection of similar animals while also moving up on the research track is also a good strategy. But if you end up gaining different animals and not the same type, then that time spent to move up on the specific track won't give you as many points as if you collected more of the same animal and moved up on the same track as well. And then to make things more interesting to get the animal cards that you want, you will need to place cards with the highest initiative in the middle section of the board. And this is the exploration area. So you will be stuck making decisions on either playing a card that will give you the highest initiative to gain that animal card or whatever card is above that section, or you can use a card to better explore or do whatever the main action is on that section and hope that you still get that animal card that you want or that character card or that mission card, or you can use a card to better explore, but it's not a guarantee. Another tough choice in the game, you always wanna move up on the engineer track, but then you will move down on the track when gaining an invention tile. Sometimes the inventions can be very handy towards another strategy, so it might be worth it, but if you get an invention and then you end up not focusing towards its benefit, and then you probably would be better off not going down on that engineer track as you will gain in-game points by climbing higher on this track. So really your choices in the game will determine the best strategy for you to take. Can you always follow that strategy? Well, no, because you might not get those other cards or bonuses later in other rounds that would complement that same strategy. So you will be working on different angles depending on the cards that you gain throughout the game. The mission cards in rounds one through three will also point you towards goals that you can do and gain even more points while fulfilling those. If you want a certain card, uh, you better play out a card to win the initiative so that you get that card. You can gain additional character cards with benefits that also be, might be stronger towards different actions over others. So try to capitalize on these cards, study them out before the round to see if you really need or want a certain card that is flipped out. Separate from all that, you will be playing out three cards in the round and you will use cards that will benefit you the most in each section. Sadly, you will have to make difficult choices doing this as not every action that you take will be a strong one and you might have to use a card solely to gain its resources so that later in the game or in that round, you can perform a stronger action and you can do so because you collected the resources to do that. Then you need to plan in a way which sections you use your cards and which ones you decide to pick up from your player board between rounds to use again. You want the most powerful or most beneficial cards in your hand and not sitting in your discard pile, not being used. And this can be really tricky because if you are focusing on a certain section on your board, you probably just picked up cards from that section of your player board. And so you might have to pick up other cards solely because you can only pick up more than one card if you keep on doing in the same section. So you might have to pick up another one just so that you solely get more cards to play out. Or sometimes you might place a card in a section of the board because you know that you want to draw that back up and you know it'll come back into your hand for the next round. So managing your cards is definitely part of the game and should be involved in your strategy. And then on top of that, you have the choice of choosing where you go in turn order and what bonus tiles that you gain and these things can hugely affect how you do on your rounds. Not only because those bonus tiles can give you actions to perform that otherwise you might not be able to do, but also because turn order can be very important due to ties. Remember that if there's a tie in the section, the player who played their card out first breaks the tie and gets to choose their card from the laid out cards first. And this will at times have players play in sections on the board where they most want to gain a card, but not always because you might not have enough resources to do that action or the right card to take that board action. So you might try to wait and see what others might do and still hope that you're able to get the cards that you want. Just deciding which section on the board to start on can be a very hard decision and you want to have first pickings of all the cards that you can. But this won't always happen as cards will most likely have a benefit to do something more powerful instead of giving you a higher initiative, which will give you your first pickings. So you will be deciding between playing a card to get the first pick on cards or playing a card to do a more powerful action in that section to gain you points elsewhere. Anyways, the game is solid with lots of decisions. There is no one way to play the game to win it. And you have to be in the game and make game time decisions towards your strategy that is always ever changing and you're 
the way that you gain cards and perform actions, and it, it's just great. So continue to find crystals to power up your perpetual steam engines with your family and friends in Delta. It's the newest Euro game from Game Brewer. Again, this is Board Game Brody, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.